Amen. Good morning and welcome everybody. I want to welcome you to the Door Christian Church of South San Diego. It is a blessing to have you here today. I want to preach a message entitled God's Time Out. I want to read a couple of scriptures. First is Proverbs 14, 34. It says, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. The next scripture is Psalms 33, 12. And it says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. America has a foundation that has allowed it to prosper and to succeed. And that foundation is the Lord Jesus Christ. Many people don't like that now. They want to make America everything but a Christian nation. But you cannot change what America is, how America has been founded. But that's not what my message is about. I want to talk about America has been in a civil war again. It seems that we can't even have a conversation without people getting angry or even resulting or ending up in some kind of violent confrontation. There has been such a division in America. And you need to understand that God hates division. Nothing can function in division. A family cannot function in division. A business cannot function in division. And a nation cannot function in division. And this is where we have been as a nation for many, many years. We have been divided. And this is the worst that I've ever seen. That people just despise each other because they don't agree. Well, we can't agree on everything. And we're never gonna. That is no reason to hate and to spread such spew, such wickedness and foulness that we see all over. America has been founded or sorry, America has a foundation that God placed. I want to read just a couple of quotes. Listen, these are from our founding fathers. This is what America was found, founded in. And it says, God who gave us life gave us liberty. Can the liberties of a nation be secure when we have removed a conviction that these liberties are a gift of God. Indeed, I tremble for my countrymen when I reflect that God is just and that his justice cannot sleep forever. That is Thomas Jefferson. Now listen to what George Washington said. He says, it is impossible to rightly govern a nation without God and the Bible. Another thing George Washington said is, Whereas it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, to be grateful for His benefits, and humbly to implore His protection and favor. Listen, these are our founding fathers. I want to read one more. It says, It cannot be emphasized too strongly or too often that this great nation was founded not by religionists, but by Christians, not on religions, but on the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is Patrick Henry. Did you hear that? That is what this nation was founded on, on Jesus Christ. And you cannot remove that. God did this. This was a sovereign work of God. But we have a nation that has been divided, that has tried to kick God out of everything. Proverbs 6, 16 through 19 says, There are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are an abomination to him, haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that make haste to run to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies, and one who sows discord among his brothers or division among his brothers. Now listen to this translation of the same scripture. There are six things the Lord hates, even seven that are disgusting to him. 
arrogant eyes, a lying tongue, hands that kill innocent people. Can you say abortion? A mind devising wicked plans, feet that are quick to do wrong, a dishonest witness spitting out lies, and a person who spreads division and conflict among relatives. God does not want a divided nation. Even greater, God does not want a divided church. Romans 16, 17 and 18 says, I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught and avoid them. For such persons do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own appetites. And by smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts of the naive. Since God hates division. Luke 7, 11, 17 says, but he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste. And a divided house falls. Hear that? A divided house falls. As long as, as the house of God is divided, it has no power. As long as the house of God is divided, it will not advance. It will not pray for the sick. It will not contend for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It will not evangelize for souls. And souls will not be converted. It seems as if God is putting our nation, and I'd say the whole world, in a timeout. Amen. I don't know if any of you ever been put in a timeout. When you're in trouble, amen, the parent says, you go sit in that corner and you wait there. We would do that to our children. It seems that God is putting the world in a timeout. It's as if God is giving us over to what we have already been doing. Living divided. It's as if God is saying, fine, you want to live divided? Then I will separate you in your homes until you grow up and stop acting foolishly. You want to be divided? Then be divided and see what happens. And we can see what is happening to our economy and economies around the nation when we live divided. Psalms 81.12 says, So I gave them over to their stubborn hearts to follow their own counsels. It's as if God is saying again, you want to be divided? You want to be foolish? You want to be angry all the time? Fine, then there you go. Romans 128 says, and since they did not see it fit to acknowledge God, which most people don't acknowledge God anymore, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. Civility has been thrown out the window. Matters have been thrown out the window. Common sense has been thrown out the window. Logic has been thrown out the window. And greater than that, God and the Spirit of God is being thrown out of everything in our country. Could it be that the church does not see division the way God sees division? Because God hates division. God does not want his house to be divided. The Pharisees accused Jesus of casting out devils by the power of the devil. If you guys remember that, listen to Mark 3.22. And it says, And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, He is possessed by Beelzebub, and by the prince of demons he casts out demons. So they're saying Jesus was divided. Now listen to Jesus' response. And this is verse 23 through 26 of Mark chapter 3. And he called to them, and he said uh, to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. So God is saying whatever is divided will soon come to an end. And if this nation does not come together again, it will come to an end. And if the church does not come together again, 
I'm not talking about introducing false doctrine and accepting everybody's doctrine. I'm talking about us coming together and standing upon what God says and not denying the truth of God's word. The church seems divided in what it worships. The church cannot preach against sin while at the same time embracing sin in the name of love and tolerance of God. That cannot happen. That is division. We don't define good and evil. God alone defines what is good and what is evil because God alone is perfect and God alone is good. What will the church worship now is a very good question. It seems as if God is putting the church in a timeout until we decide not to have a divided heart in who and what we worship. I believe God could be calling us back to worship in spirit and in truth. John 4, 23 says, But the hour is coming, and now is here, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. Can it be that when we repent and return to true worship of the only one who is worthy of worship, that this will pass? We are very familiar with 2 Chronicles 7, 14. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. I personally believe that as pastors, we must lead the people in humbling ourselves and in repentance before God that there may be a healing in our land. Now listen to what Numbers 16, 45 through 48 says. A plague had been loosed because of the people's sin and their arrogance and pride. This is what goes on. It says, get away from the midst of this congregation that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell on their faces and Moses said to Aaron, take your censer and put fire on it far from off the altar and lay incense on it and carry it quickly to the congregation and make atonement for them. For the wrath has gone out from the Lord. The plague has begun. So Aaron took it as Moses said and ran into the midst of the assembly. And behold, the plague had already begun among the people and he put on the incense and made atonement for the people and he stood between the living and the dead and the plague was stopped. And I believe this is the call of pastors here in our nation to stand between the living and the dead, to stand between the plague and the people and the plague will stop. That we must cry out to almighty God that God would have his way, that God would end this and that his house would be divided again, that our nation, or sorry, that his house would be united again and not divided, and that our nation would be united once again. Now listen to this. In just three short months, just like God did with the plagues of Egypt, God has taken away everything we worship. God said, you want to worship athletes? I will shut down the stadiums. You want to worship musicians? I will shut down civic centers. You want to worship actors? I will shut down movie theaters. You want to worship money? I will shut down the economy and collapse the stock market. You don't want to go to church and worship me? I will make it where you can't go to church. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, Turn from the wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and I will hear their land. Maybe we don't need a vaccine. Maybe we need to take this time of isolation from the distractions of the world and have a personal revival where we focus on the only thing in the world that really matters and that is Jesus Christ. Do you think God maybe is trying to get people's attention? The church is shut down for Super Bowl Sunday. When I think Jesus is greater than any football team, 
And listen, don't get me wrong, I love sports. I grew up playing sports, and I enjoy watching sports. But Jesus is greater than all of them, and they will never take first place in my life. And they will never ever take place in church. I would rather be in the presence of God, of the Almighty God, who gave himself for me, who was willingly slaughtered that I might be delivered. And as I see all this, I can't but help think of the psalm, The Heart of Worship. I want to read a few of the lyrics from there, and it says, When the music fades and all is stripped away, and I simply come longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart, I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing that I've made it when it's all about you. Jesus, all I'm saying is I can't hurt. Or, sorry, there it ends there. There's, that's all I'm reading. But I'm saying, this is what I'm saying. It can't hurt if we make worship all about Jesus again, can it? Everybody's trying to find vaccines. And listen, I believe if we make worship all about Jesus again, if Jesus is number one in our lives, things will change radically and quickly. Let us come back to a heart of worship. Let us come back to a heart that is united under God. You think God is saying, I alone founded this great nation for my purpose and for my plan? And it has gone very, very far astray. God is calling America back to a heart of worship. And God is calling his church back to a heart of worship. Amen. Let's bow our heads.